All right, now we're going to get our drawing and we're going to put it into the title box. So we're going to open up the Excel title box. So we're going to click on the download. And we're going to start with this. So I'm going to go to base. And it, the reason why you save that is because it should, in theory, be there. That's why you had to save it. And actually, I'm going to keep clicking on the views until I get the right one. Okay, that is correct. So there we go. So I'm going to place that and then it's going to tell it okay. And I'm just going to move it to about approximately where I think it needs to go. If you've had any experience with AutoCAD, this is where you start to love Inventor. You're like, oh, yes. Uh, now notice I have my little hidden lines. If I didn't have my hidden lines, it could be because I could have a different view. This view is the primary view, so it's the one you have to check. So, so let's say sometimes that, that one is selected and the hidden lines are gone. So it's just, it's just a matter of the kind of view that you're going to use. I also want to get an isometric of it. And right click create. And then of course double click on it and tell it to be realistic looking. There we go. That was super hard, right? All right, now let's do dimensioning. This is how you dimension. Super hard, you ready? Boom, that's it. See? Um, and this one, I'm gonna bring it out. Dimension. Uh, there it goes. And that one, because there's four of them, I'm just going to go to the end of it parentheses. See, that was super hard. Now our next step is we're going to come here and I'm going to click I properties. And under I properties, this is where you change everything. So this is where you would put in your name. Name. Okay, hang on, let's do this. Let's do quick save as. Same thing to that desktop. should let us change the eye properties. Sometimes it won't let you until you save it. So now let's try. Okay, so there's my gobbledygook good project. Um, the date would be the day that we're doing this. So let's say the 21st. And there's different things that we could change and set. But for right now, the main thing is our title. Our title is um, SHS logo. And we just to apply and hit close. And as you do, notice it automatically updated everything. Super hard, right? Now our next thing is we're going to need to go in and we're going to need to add the printer so we can print. So I'm going to come right here and go to devices and printers. We're going to add a printer. We're going to add a network. We're going to tell it to stop and say the only one it wasn't listed. Access back to WNT print. And FAR 220. And tell it next. And then we just have to let it go through the process of adding the printer. Um, I'm actually not going to go through that process because I don't want to wait. But that's what you do. So you add the printer. Once you've added the printer, you can now print this. So we're going to go file, print. You pick the correct printer. So in that case, it would be the, the 220. So it would be Ferentin 220. I'm just going to pick the 203, which is right here in this lab. And we're going to try model one to one. Sometimes it'll fit perfectly, sometimes it won't. I like to sometimes do a preview, make sure, and say, ooh, no, that's wrong, see? So let's go back into um, that print mode again. Um, oh, that's not gonna work. And so if you hit that preview button, it'll allow you to see. So we may have to go ahead and go to the best fit to get the print right. There we go, perfect. At which point in time then, I know that's correct, and I just print it and I tell it yes and tell it okay. And I'll print the drawing out. Awesome, you've completed the assignment. Now if you were able to complete this assignment and get everything into the layout and have it all good to go like you're supposed to, go ahead and try something a little harder. So we're gonna challenge ourselves. We're gonna challenge to see if we can do the harder version of the logo. Or if you wanna make your teacher really, really happy, do one for your school logo. Go find the image and pull it in. But I would repeat that process just like I did previously. Come here. And at which point in time I would then come in and I would say, okay, well I would draw my two rectangles and then I would do that half inch border all the way around. And then I'm going to use my straight lines to start drawing different parts of it. So I would need to draw, for an example, in this one, if I'm going to do it, I would build it up in layers. So I would probably make the orange like maybe point one up. And then I would make the blue probably, you know, let's see, 
No, yeah, I probably do the orange probably 0.1, the blue would probably be 0.15 up so that it has that kind of embossed look. And then I would just leave the plain white plain with the surface level so that I have different layers of it. So what you just have to do is bring the logo. If you're going to use your school logo, this is how hard it is. You ready? It's hard. Okay, go find the logo. So um, let's just say CHS logo, my old school. And well, we don't have the exact same one I want, but let's just say um, I'm going to use, I don't know what the heck I'll use this one. Um, I'm just going to save it to the desktop. You go right here to image, and you go find that logo. And there we go. And at which point in time you may need to rotate it, so you just use your rotate function, you grab it, center. Here, Sometimes you have to rotate it more than once. Yeah. And then I can also make it bigger. I can scale it up. And at which point in time then I can trace over it and do what I was doing previously. And maybe this time you want to make it circular instead of square. Um, I, the reason why the ones, the ones that we did here were square is because that's a requirement for St. Houston State University is that they're supposed to be at least a half inch white border all the way around it. So just kind of pay attention to those kind of things. So go have a little fun with this and hopefully you've learned a little bit of basics of how to use Inventor.